Coach Azor, what you thought of Patrick Wickelander's performance today, especially going as long as he did on such a hot day? Uh, say that again. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. I was wondering what you thought of Patrick Wicklander's performance today for Arkansas. I thought he was really good. Um, had a fastball uh, that he commanded pretty good. He threw at different velocities. You know, he threw up there 92, but 88, and he would change speeds on his fastball. But his break, he had two different breaking balls, a true breaking ball and then a kind of a cutter or slider. And uh, I thought he commanded his own good enough uh, to scatter some hits. We got like six hits early. And left a lot of guys on, like six or seven guys on base. So he made the pitches when he had to, and that was a difference early. And then he settled in after they hit that grand slam. He settled in a little better, and I thought he was really good. And you guys got the bases loaded in the fourth. It was seven to one, but you had a shot to get back in the game. And um, it, there was kind of a miscommunication where your guy got on load the bases, but Wick Leonard got out of that. How, how big was that that he was able to, to get around that? Huge. Uh, I thought Tyler McDonough. Had a good at bat, hit the ball really, really good. Just hit it to the wrong part of the ballpark here. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew. Yeah, Elliot, I know um, obviously Reed was having a hard time with their lineup there when he gets taken out um, after three. But with that short outing for him tonight, is there a possibility that we could see him potentially again out of the pen this weekend? No. Um, we've rode him all year long. And uh, – he, uh, he just didn't seem like himself tonight, and uh, I don't know exactly what it was. I'll talk to him when I get back or in the morning. He just didn't seem like himself tonight, so we pulled him much earlier than normal, but uh, he just didn't seem uh, like typical Reed, so we got him out of there, and then that's when it fell off a little bit. Christopher. Hey, Coach Everett, sorry for the tough loss tonight. Uh, talk about Torres, a kid from our neck of the woods here in Maryland from Calvert Hall, hitting a home run you know, to start the uh, scoring. All right, good player. I mean, uh, great player, great student. Uh, Calvert Hall is a good high school, and he's uh, they can be proud of him. But he, uh, he got us on the board early, and uh, he's a really good player, been good for us for two years. Rob? Yeah, Elliot, first of all, the question that, that uh, Andrew asked, I just want to be clear. You said Reed Johnston would not be available Sunday in an all-hands-on-deck situation? I'm going to talk to him in the morning. Like I said, I didn't think Reed looked like himself. I think something uh, – I don't know whether there was something going on with uh, uh, some kind of fatigue or something, but uh, he just didn't seem to sell. So, I'll, uh, I'll talk to Reed in the morning, but I would be – I'd say right now, absolutely. So there's two ways to look at the relief pitching. Obviously, they didn't they they hit, they got hit on. Uh, they didn't give you a chance to stay in the game. But at the same time, do you feel like the guys you sent out there gave you a chance maybe to succeed in game two and game three? Those are guys that generally you would not have been the first one. They wouldn't have been the first one that got called on. No, they finished the game. They got the game over, which uh, it got ugly. But uh, that's uh, that's fine. They that's uh, that's a bullpen that's going to have to get better, and uh, we knew that all year. And uh, but anyway, we. Uh, we saved the guys we needed to save, and we're just going to have to come out and play a lot better tomorrow, obviously. Thank you, sir. Clara? Um, hey, Coach, uh, you had a series against Wake Forest earlier this season. I believe it was game two when you gave up 14 runs. Game three came back to win 15 to eight. Is there something you can take away from that turnaround, that series, and translate it to this series? I don't think so. I think it's just that, that was so long ago, and I don't think so. I think our players knew what happened tonight, and uh, we just um, uh, we got to play a lot better tomorrow. And uh, Sam Highfield is certainly capable of going out there and giving us a good outing. He's going to have to against, against this Arkansas ball club. Alec? Yeah, I just want to know kind of what, what's the message to the team after a loss like this, or is this more of a case where you have so many veteran guys that you almost kind of don't need to – don't really need to say anything to them. You know that they kind of get what they need to do. They, they know what's going on. This is, this is not only a veteran group, it's a smart group. They, not, they know what's going on. Nothing need to be said. But basically, I just said, hey, um, forget this game as quickly as you can. There's nothing to think about, nothing to dwell on. We came down here with two wins to go to home. Oh, we still have two wins to go to home. Let's play good tomorrow and see what happens on Sunday. Last one, Bob. Yeah, Coach, just wonder what you thought of Arkansas's offense today, especially they, they showed a lot of power, obviously, with all those home runs. Just what what would you think of their offense? Well, their offense is good. It's, it's good. And uh, uh, like I said, 
I think they got over 100 home runs, and uh, it's it's designed for this ballpark, and and they got a good team. Thank you. All right, that was wrap us up. Thanks, coach.